them in my effing room because they are asleep and now I can talk freely as much as I fucking want to about any single disturbance I might go downstairs you might hear me walking downstairs but anyways we are here today to talk about one last thing and that thing is Google Stadia Base yeah I know there's a pro subscription but the pro subscription is really really high but what they realized about this Google Stadia Pro Edition base, so like that's baseline if you don't want anything like DLC or whatever, because the DLC already comes with the game and all kinds of stuff. So what Google is now realizing that they need to start forcing Google Stadia base. So what is Google Stadia base? Well, you have it for free once you buy a setup, and then you're supposed to pay ten dollars a month for the subscription so and that's just a base thing so every 10 months you will pay for something i'm trying to get google stadium and see what this is all about what games are free what games are not because some games are totally free meanwhile i don't get it i don't get it you gotta pay ten dollars a month for everything and they're estimating next year that they this year they might get four million or whatever so, they're talking about doing base more than the regular subscription. They're doing it mostly on mobile rather than on PC or televisions because a whole lot of people don't own televisions and a whole lot of PC, a whole lot of people do have PCs or phones like I'm using. I've like one over there. Where is showing? One right here, as you can see. So, yeah. What does this mean for me? Well, I'm trying to see, and I'm trying to get all the news in before I get mine. I haven't, I don't know about the subscription. I don't know about the pay. I don't know about anything. One guy has canceled his subscription, and he stopped paying for Google Stadia. But you can still get a bunch of free games, so I'm gonna look that up. Let's actually, let's look it up right now and see what we get, because this video is already two minutes long, I guess. I'm trying, guys. I know it sucks. I'm on, like, episode whatever on Astro Boy. I'm on your other account. What happens after you stop paying for Google Stadia? I refuse to type all that in. There's an epidemic spreading. Ah, not sponsored by this. Also, I don't care if you vape. I don't care if you smoke. Do whatever you like. It's your body, man. Don't don't have these ads saying, oh, what's bad? Dude, the American Republic does not care. The American government does not care about um your fucking body. It's your shit. Well, however, they're trying to take our guns away. Like, they're trying to, like, ban the Second Amendment, and they're saying, oh, this is personal. Let me ban guns. I might vote for Trump again. This pissing, like, that's what, that's what it is. As soon as you're saying you're taking our guns away as a self, as a black American living in the fucking shelf, you taking my guns away is like taking my fried chicken away. It ain't gonna fucking happen. And if you talk to a black man in the North, he's gonna say, oh, well, they sure take guns away. Gun control is kind of bad up here. Yeah, that's, I, that's understandable. But in the South, he hell no, we have learned to always defend ourselves with guns because that's what people do in the South. Most people are gun owners in the South. They either like hunting, using them for self-defense, or just carrying around on them in their house. And most of the people that own guns are responsible gun owners, and the ones that don't are not. Like you're probably hearing about school shooters, a woman trying to shoot up the a school. So she worked at this pizza restaurant. These kids walked in one day and then she had an AK-47 and she was planning to shoot up this school nearby because of bullying. 
Listen, dude, if you were being bullied, do something about it. The school didn't do anything, whoop their asses or change schools. No one, I whoop people's asses all the time. Do I win? Half the time, I would say no. Otherwise, sometimes I would say yes, but hey, hey, that's me, man. You don't cheat up schools. And I know you're probably going to bring up this thing. What about that thing that happened in 2015? That guy got like a gun and shot a girl at a golf course. Well, he didn't. The gun, the gun that the guy that showed him the gun didn't follow the law. So this guy walks in with an expired um, gun license, right? Buys the gun, walks out and kills this girl, correct? So, if the guy would have, so the um, guy at the gun shop would have said, oh, this is expired, I can't sell you a gun, he would have just went and got a new license and still shot the girl, correct, but if he would have followed the law, that would have done something better about it, and get the point, but instead he's just like, oh, it's expired, I give you a gun anyway, so yeah, let's listen to Game Explain and get off this rant. during the 2019 holiday season and the gaming community didn't take too kindly to it. The reviews were pretty messy. The launch itself had less features than originally promised and there were just some issues that customers were having. It doesn't seem like it's taken the world by storm since launch, so now we're asking the question, what happens to Google Stadia now? Where does it go? Does it die? Well, let's put our thinking caps on and just dive in here. So first things first, Stadia itself. I reviewed it in a Before You Buy video, and it, it was difficult to recommend. The streaming technology is kind of hit or miss, and results vary everywhere for every person in every location on every level of internet. But boy, I will say, when it works, it works really well, and it looks good. It, it might even be useful for certain people. Maybe folks who don't play tons and tons of games, only a select few. Uh, maybe they want to play games while traveling. Maybe people want to play games in a hotel room or something and not lug around a laptop. I don't know. But Google wants $10 a month for Stadia Pro as a subscription. This gets you access. Basically, early access. Uh, you have to get the big $100 plus Founders Edition with a controller to try any of it out. Regular subscription options, I guess, are coming, they've said, and a free version is coming in 2020. Stadia Pro subscription gets you what has amounted to two free games a month, uh, access to more features like enough, the highest quality 4K HDR 5.1 streaming options. Other than that, you have to buy games on Google's Marketplace. You're paying $10 a month to get access to their store to buy shit, as it stands right now, at least. That'll probably change this year, but still, the prices on the store are the same as everywhere else, if not higher, and you can only stream these games. And all of this stuff, it, it, all this stuff is just, like, not appealing for a lot of gamers, it seems. And I've kind of said it in the Before You Buy It, and I, I do feel strongly that the fact that I needed to break that all down for you in a big, long paragraph in the opening of this video to explain it just means it's pretty complicated for the consumer who might not know much about it. There's so, okay, you see, they saying a free version comes along, but I'm going to go back here in the video. Um, I'm trying to see it. I'm still going back. Hold on. Okay, here it is. I'm going to enlarge this so most of y'all can see what I'm trying to talk about. So, if you see... Uh, I don't know if my camera is going to get this. But, if okay, it's reflecting, so I see it. So, you can clearly see here some of the games. Uh, so, free shit. I think. I'm supposed to say free in there. Shit. I didn't, did I go back? So, basically, here it is. A free based version. You can all see that shit. So, we don't know what the free based version is. Like, at all. I thought I saw free there, but now it's 100. It's like regular pricing. So, let's go. Google Stadia free version. Click on this. This is an ad. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I look up something, they get ad. I get like a random ad pop up ad. No. No. All right, we're going to go to the shop here, and 
It should be here. Here it is. The pro version is right here, and that's the only available version. Now you can see this stuff on eBay and other websites as well. But what I don't understand is that they're talking about a free version down the line. There's also... There's also other versions as well that you can get, but I wouldn't trust these other versions because, yeah. There was also this other thing that was called the Cube, and it was like 121 or a bunch of people supported it, and they didn't get their money back, and people didn't like it. So the company got went into bankruptcy and bailed on the project and took all of the people's money. And it was a whole court thing that went on. Did anyone go to jail? F no, but they did have to pay back the money that was stolen from the people. Didn't accept refunds, but we got you legally. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Here it is. This was what I was talking about earlier. You see how in the pro version you get free games right there? It says free, but if you go back, play my video back, it was to like $121 or some shit. So, what I'm trying to understand is, if you get the pro version, it is free. But, if you don't, it's not free. So, I don't understand what they're doing. Because you still have to pay $10 a month anyways. For the average consumer, who might not know much about it. There's quite a bit to figure out exactly what you're getting. And first impressions are very important. And if you're confused, that's a bad thing. Especially when this thing was initially announced and dubbed as, ha as easy as having an account, clicking on a game on your browser, and suddenly you can play it. No, it, it's not really instant games anywhere, and it's not really the Netflix of games either, which is okay. Like, But it's just another game marketplace, uh, one with the least amount of ownership out of all of them since you're paying for a license not even to download, just to stream a game. There was a lot going on at launch. You know, there were lots of people who pre-ordered day one. So here's what I don't get. The Epic Game Store did the same thing. You can say, oh, yeah, the Epic Game Store, right? It bought out a whole bunch of other developers, indie developing, and all kinds of shit. And people are like, oh, but it's so good because it pays back the indie developers. Haha, <laughs> no, that's not what happens at all. The Epic Game Store keeps money for itself. And it's just designed to make money off of other creators. Because in a, if, it, if this was a regular company, right? Say this company made a game for the Epic Game Store, right? And the Epic Game Store can do whatever the fuck they want with it. Because they have all rights to it and all things with it. Correct? So and the creators are sitting there waiting for their paychecks. The games that they work super hard on. Correct? And get paid nothing. That They get paid peanuts. I guess that's what you can say, because that's what the Epic Game Store is doing. You could say, oh, Google Stadia is doing the same thing as well, but it's better, because Google Stadia is way better than any other thing that you're going to get. Yeah, sure, you might have to pay for the Xbox 5, or PlayStation 5, or whatever the fuck at this point. I got tired of console gaming, because... Uh, at, when I was a boy, I can think of nothing but collecting games. And seeing how expensive and real consoles were, I just turned to PC gaming. And, and like, if you would ask, like, 14 or 13-year-old me, right, right, back in the past, he would have said, I would never play PC games in my entire life. Now, however, now that I'm 16 or... or 15 last year, now that I'm 16, I will play PC games anywhere because buying a console game is less satisfactory now. It makes more sense than ever just to get PC rather than spending all your money on a console and then next year they're going to upgrade that console or the next, you get the point? They're, like, the console gets out of date, it, it will, like, expire or whatever, no longer get to play games, and, like, they upgrade to a new system, and the thing is, they were creating remakes and all kinds of shit, so it's just better to buy your PC rather than anything else. Other games like this are realizing it, too, so Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, if you're listening, Go out, go on Steam, go wherever, and as a business practitioner, share your stuff with 
anyone and everyone that you can do. Disney hasn't lis- listen, le- listened to any of my warnings about that they're sitting on a monopoly. And however, doing anything with that monopoly, they won't share it with anybody. The Spider-Man rights to everything will belong to Disney, if not. He bought out Netflix, they got Hulu, and pretty soon they might even own Google itself. So Disney wouldn't want to share anything with it. But because this is Monopoly, they're going to go bankrupt sooner or later. So Disney can't buy out everything. Sure, it might have shut down um, Disney Europe. Sure, it might be setting up Disney China right now. But Disney needs to go out in this Monopoly and just spend money. Because the national debt's gonna fuck them. Taxes are probably gonna F them. And a whole bunch of other stuff that is going to F them as well. So it's better for Disney not to sit on this monopoly as well as it's good for them to sell it out. Anyways, let's Didn't get their units. And varying reports of performance was one thing. It's worth pointing out that plenty of other reviewers had a much better experience than us, more smooth. But it was all the other technical stuff that saw some scrutiny and may have alienated more potential buyers. A lot of outlets like Digital Foundry and stuff confirmed that most of the Stadia games that boasted 4K in big bold letters weren't actually native 4K output at all. Destiny 2 is rendered at 1080p and upscaled to 4K to look a little better. Red Dead Redemption 2, despite having the infinite computing power of the cloud, couldn't hold a candle to the same actual version running on an actual PC. Google's response seems to have put the responsibility on the developers themselves to make their game take advantage of Stadia's features like 4K. Okay, sure, they are really the ones making the game so it makes sense, but still, it just kind of put a damper on the launch. Because the potential was there for some people who maybe didn't have the money to run out and buy the newest console that supports 4K to still get a lot of that exciting action through this streaming service. You know, I don't know. But the biggest problem, you know, is that it should have been early access. It, it was only playable on a select few types of phones and tablets, limited mostly to Google's Pixel phone line. Thankfully, the browser support worked pretty nicely, as any computer with Chrome could get games in a window. Also, Androids can also, any Android that you might have, any um, ta- Android, like, at all. Like, I have an Android phone right here. I could download to Google Stadia on here and play it. I have another Android right here. This is an Android LG as well. I got two Android LGs. And then I got an Android tablet, as you can see. So I can download Google Stadia, the app, anywhere I want to and play games on there. But yeah, beforehand, like in 2019 when it released, you couldn't play Google Stadia, the app, anywhere you wanted. It was only a select phones, but now you can play it anywhere. Or you could use the Chromecast bundled in with the Founders Box to get any game playing on your TV. But as things go. Yeah, my I'm poor as F. Look at that television I got over there. You telling me I have um any money for a flat screen TV? F no. My my mom's is literally oh shoot. Oh shit, I almost pressed the pause button. My mom's is literally standing on the same nightstand. Yeah, I don't have further down the line. Money Founders friend. Edition big box hundred dollar plus thing won't be a thing. They're just gonna have to you either buy a Chromecast or hope you have one. There's just a lot to it all, considering how simple it should be. Now, the store is getting more and more games, but it doesn't have tons. The free games are decent. Uh, there's an exclusive game, but it didn't really blow... I think it has at least, like, 25 games, because on their um, YouTube channel, they have been talking about updating more and more games, like, from Xbox and PlayStation, and other shit like that. So, at this point, they have 25 games in the works right now. I really don't know. Let's, let's just... Let's, no, I, I stepped a whole bunch of shit. No! No! Oh, uh, you're probably asking, what about the live... I do a live stream and I never really feel like it. I don't feel like doing one right now. You know how much stuff I have to put together? I just do those on the weekdays if I can. What was I gonna, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, how is it? Right. How, ah, how many games are on Google Stadia? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. Google announced that it planned to release over 120 games for Stadia that year, with at least 10 timed exclusives for Stadia. 
Right, okay, so, and added four more games. They added four, so, at launch, they had 22 games, right? And then added four more in December 2019, January, and Google to release over. So, in 2020, they were releasing 120 more games. They uploaded four more games, so that means... They haven't updated this shit, so right now they only have, let's see, 23, 24, 25, 26. They only have 26 games right now, and they're planning to le- release 120. Interesting. No, no. is still light. Generally, ourselves and many others ruled this should be considered an early access product for real. But Google is asking for a lot of money to buy in and being dubbed a founder. Now, after launch, a lot of folks tried pretty hard to just get a gauge on on how many people are actually playing on Stadia. A response hasn't been super loud. You know, the stat tracking bot Charlemagne claimed that uh, by the end of November, 9,960 Stadia players logged in to play Destiny 2 during a specific day. We don't know who these people are. Let me show you who they are. Hold on. These guys are called Game Explain. So we don't know about Game Explain. Okay, I'm gonna show you right now. Go subscribe to this channel. They're really good at making stuff like IGN and crap. Same day, 1.37 million players logging into Destiny everywhere else. Destiny 2 is also one of Stadia's flagship free games, so anyone could have downloaded and play it at Stadia. And that's all who are playing it. That's it. Uh, hell, it might be just people logging in at work or at school just to retain some rewards or something. I don't know. PC Games End reported that on November 20th, Stadia had 44 players in Crucible, 13 players in Gambit, and 52 players in Raids. It's like 100 people playing all the non-PVE modes, and that's kind of crazy. Here in the office, some of our Destiny guys, the fans... Nah, hold on, hold on. Let me look this up. So this is 2020, right? How many people? How many people are playing Google Stadia in 2020? So, okay. in 2020, the number of people that played. How many people are on Google Stania? So Wikipedia says it's like around 200 and something right now. That's what it's saying. I'm still trying to find it. They can't. Okay. Two two hundred and seventy seven, I think. I don't remember. It doesn't say, but more people are playing it this year. Uh, definitely had trouble finding matches. Now you might say, well, everyone hates Destiny, so that's why no one's playing it. Which that, that, that's fine if you think you do you, but the numbers don't lie on the actual game. And it's at least somewhat of a gauge on the response of Stadia, considering it had everything going for it, including being free and having cross account progression. And still, this is where we're at. The potential for all this is there. I still say, stand by, the tech is exciting. And the future possibilities down the line are definitely cool. You know, watching a YouTube video or your favorite creator, or maybe you're watching like a how-to guide video, and then you click a link and suddenly you're playing the game right there at that point on your computer, that's insane. I'm excited for the free version that'll come out in 2020, like they said, because everyone has a Google account. So if they do it right, you know, if they do kind of nail this stuff, it could be a win-win. Because at the very least, people without the resources could be able to try way more games than they'd normally be exposed to, you know? That's where they need to hone in. Uh, That's where I think they need to go from here. Really, this is all speculation on my end from here on out, but 
I, I think the potential is there, but not as Google Stadia exists currently, like at all. I, I think it could be stronger as a service with highly unique features instead of just another marketplace with some unique features. You know what I mean? They've been putting out games consistently every month and they just need to keep it up and evolve into exactly what people might want. It seems like they don't know it yet. Uh, they have a lot to work on, you know, improving the tech, of course, but uh, bring more feature parity, more supported devices, and of course, some of those cool features that they talked about in, in general that will all only benefit it. But the biggest battle still, and this is the hardest one, and I'm not even convinced, the battle is convincing people. A lot of people still have very bad internet all over the world. Okay, so um, YouTube is definitely going to recommend this video to other people. I know that much. Because um, they um, make sure my algorithm is correct. Because I'm the only underdeveloping channel right now that's really under. And they're trying to like develop me above and beyond. I'm not the only channel that's doing this as well. They're trying to knock out... You know how some people remain on top and some people remain on the bottom? Yeah, they're trying to knock off the people that are on top right now and put newer people on top. You get the point? So a whole lot of newer people are not getting recommended enough because of all these older people that have been on YouTube for years. You get the point? And they're trying to, like, make sure this content is going. That's how it's working. And a buddy and who streaming doesn't video games, even lot. if the requirements with Stadia are surprisingly low, it's still a pipe dream for some. Yeah, I got a friend that uploaded you know, yesterday. So. A lot of people think Don't Google is going to ditch this thing on his like video a ton of he does. You know, marked an immediate failure. And honestly, like personally, maybe I think they they should. I don't know if they're actually going to do that because gaming is such an absolute massive powerhouse industry. You know, like bringing in more than the movie industry. And Google has so much damn money that not in the anime industry. Money on this <laughs> for a long, long time, just so they have a foothold in another big money making industry. You know, they might be willing to pay up. Well, here's the thing. I don't think Google Stadia needed to be a thing because we already have. Um, what is it called? Um, yeah, Google Play or the App Store, as some most people call it. And that doesn't make any sense to me because if Google Play exists, why didn't Google just make a whole entire system for Google Play? You get my drift. That way, if someone has Google Play on their phone already, they can download games and all kinds of stuff like that. What I think Google needs to do for Google Stadia is combine Google Stadia with Google Play and that would be a whole lot more better. Shoot. Yeah, this is thing every time I say Google a lot, it just randomly shows up on my tablet or on anything. Uh, just to say that they're in it. But they might be looking at it in the long term, you know, spend lots of money for the next few years in the hopes of finally breaking in just because they can. I mean, they've acquired studios to make games for Stadia, they've hired heavyweights like Phil Harrison behind so many other consoles, and even the famous developer and leader uh, Jade Raymond. It, it does seem like they're honestly trying here, but the biggest battle is they have to make people want it. And I know the hardcore crowd definitely doesn't, and the casual crowd, it's still a lot to convince and teach them what it actually is. So it's one of two ways, really. It either keeps on keeping on and gets better and finds a foothold with a respectable customer base as it continues to build or it keeps on keeping on and gets better and then still manages to just kind of fade out i think it would have a much brighter future if there weren't other services and big companies out there trying to do somewhat similar things in different ways you know stadia has a lot of competition steam's trying to do the same thing that stadia is doing one of my friend my friend that is a heavy steam player said that would be really bad <laughs> PC gamers that. have various ways of streaming their library playable to different devices. Uh, Microsoft's xCloud project is still early, but first impressions of it is, as a game service are pretty solid. And at least you can access your current library in an ecosystem that you have already spent money in. And the Game Pass stuff, you know. And then PlayStation is making strides as well. And they're all presumably ramping it up oh, wow, for that's, the next generation. That's actually my now, third finger. Straight streaming no, games literally, or legit. Them for later use, and then I do this deck is hey. really stacked and hey. a lot of that competition is kind of looking at least a little better than this stuff whether you want it or not so that's where we're at you know this is more of a conversation video and we're looking forward to seeing the comments now before you do comment ask yourself you know what would google have to do you want a store or consider this theoretical and there are some people out there not top of mind at all i know we're not thinking about it and help us out and
Oh, well, anyways, this video has gone really long. I hope my camera doesn't cut off. So, um, let's see if it, we can go to 30 minutes here. Alright, so, Google Stadia. Here's what I think they need to do. And I think other companies are trying to do the same thing that Google Stadia is. It keeps on keeping on and keep getting better and better and better. Now, if Google Stadia was more, let's say, um, progressive, mean, and all, and not like, oh, here's Google Stadia, <sighs> go buy it. They need to be progressive and mean to survive in the gaming world because that will get the hardcore gaming crowd. And what draws the hard game, hardcore gaming crowd also draws the casual gamers, the people that dislike playing games like me. So if they were more um, angry, more progressive like that, then Google Stadia would be a good platform. But right now, it's not being progressive, so it's not going to survive for that long. So for what I think is this, be more mean, and you guys will you guys will do it. Anyways, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and always remember, remember to be cool. Bye.